ideally this entire project, it, the goal for it from the beginning is to be an empathy curriculum where this can live on and this can be in schools and this can be in museums, this can be all over the world potentially, where you can just put on the headset and scroll through someone else's experience that is not your own and see from someone else's, see through someone else's eyes. Because another thing that you don't get to see when you see it on your phone that yeah. we've created in the headset is we use this like new hand tracking technology. It was even before, Oculus, now all, all Oculus Quests have it, but in the beginning they, they didn't when we were first making these episodes, so, but the hand tracking is so essential because you look down and you see your own hands, it's tracking your hands, and you see your hands and your arms and your torso and you're, you're moving your fingers, except your hands are either of a different race or a different gender, and you are completely embodied in someone else's shoes. Hey everybody, it's Aaron, and Elijah Allen Blitz is the gentleman you just heard. Elijah has become known for directing award-winning virtual reality experiences. In fact, he was one of the first VR directors for Time Magazine, and he was referring to the Emmy-winning Messy Truth VR Experience, a series he co-created with Van Jones, and that features actors Winston Duke from Black Panther and Academy Award winner Brie Larson. Now, just to clarify, these episodes are based on true stories, and they're designed to be viewed through a VR headset where you're looking through the eyes of a character. You're in the scene, right? Uh, for example, like being a young African-American boy in the passenger seat while his father is being pulled over and intimidated by police. You're witnessing this. Or a waitress during a performance review while her boss harasses and wields his power. Now, the series was released in 2019, and because of COVID, these in-person VR experiences were limited. But I think Elijah and his team are on the cutting edge and continue to be of transformative storytelling. Now, prior to COVID, Elijah and his team took the messy truth experience to CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Conference. But before we get to what happened there, I wanted to ask Elijah when his VR journey started. There's been, you know, a few different waves of VR. There was like in the early, like you're saying, in the late 80s, early 90s, there was a guy named Jaron Lanier, who's one of the pioneers. And there, there was kind of these like, oh, VR is the next thing, but it didn't really happen. And then there was another wave in about 2015, 2016, which is when I kind of re-entered, or I guess entered from myself the space. And it, I was at the uh, TED conference and I saw this VR experience and it wasn't like it was the perfect epitome of what VR needs to be, but I saw the potential and I understood exponential growth and exponential technology and just how this is only going to get better and better and better. And it was like, okay, I, you know, to, to me, it's like, if, if I can distill my mission, what I want to do down into a sentence, it would be to use technology to elevate consciousness. And so I, I just saw this as an opportunity and it wasn't like, oh, I want to, you know, make my whole life about this thing. But that ended up being what happened, you know, for at least for the following five years. It was just like, OK, everything that I can do. And so I, I, I was lucky enough later that year in 2015 to, to work on a project in Haiti. We shot a little 360 piece with some friends. And then the next year after that, it was like this snowball effect. I, I worked with Ken Burns uh, for his documentary about the Holocaust. That was released by Time Magazine. That was the first VR experience that they did uh, working with their incredible team over there. There and it just was this snowball effect. And, and actually, it was after that, I had already known Van for a while, but it was after that piece that he and I connected because that was right around the time that Trump got elected. And we were talking about doing a separate project about uh, something completely different. And like a week after the election, he and I got on the phone and we're like, you know what? I think we need to pivot. And I think we need to just see if we can use the power of this medium to try and bring everybody closer together. Directing TV or film is one thing. But I asked Elijah to try and pinpoint the difference between those traditional disciplines and directing virtual reality. You have to take into account that you don't know at any moment where the viewer is going to be looking. You know, you have 360 degrees to so your job. Instead of crafting a frame like you would in traditional, you know, television and film, it's you are actually creating a world for the viewer to explore. I see myself even less as a director and more as a facilitator because I'm just taking these real experiences and using my knowledge of this medium to help facilitate all of these, you know, different pieces to come together so that the viewer can experience this thing. But it's not a director in the traditional sense because you're creating an environment to then you know, put on, where someone will, will then be able to get to live in this world. Part of facilitating really impactful VR storytelling is taking that experience to spaces that on the surface may not have a friendly audience, so to speak. 
But as Elijah told me, it's in those spaces where people actually shed tears and experience transformative moments. When, when we had the opportunity to take this, the first episode to CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Conference, it was like, you know, there were guys wearing MAGA hats and NRA hats and taking off their hats and putting on the visors and having these experiences. Police officers were watching it. And it was just like, this is what it's, it's about. You know, this is about creating these conversations and being able to engage with people on a human level and being like past politics, past, you know, whatever, you, you know, the thoughts, the preconceived notions you might have and just being like, as a human to human, what are you feeling? What are you experiencing? And to me, like, that's the goal. And that was, you know, I, I helped fund that, that CPAC trip myself because I was like, this is what we built this for. You know, we didn't build this just to show people that have already had this experience and agree with us already or agree with this specific specific perspective. It's like, no, this is to create a conversation and bring more people together, not to just be like create more divisive content where it's like, oh, F this guy or F that guy. And this is my side and that's your side. It's like, no, let's come together because fundamentally we are humans. And that is the heart of all of this stuff, man. And if this is, you know, that like when you say, you know, you got to go and speak with people and, and, and share your stories and, and bring that connection to people that that is the same kind of thing that is that empathy that is that you know people when they're engaged with you i'm sure they're experiencing that same shift where they're hearing your story and they're identifying with parts of it as themselves eventually when those these headsets are ubiquitous we can send these headsets everywhere in the world and just be like hey take three to five minutes look at someone else's perspective and see see what you think all i could think about during our conversation was man i can't wait till the pandemic winds down so that some of you can put on the goggles and experience these Messy Truth episodes. Elijah said there's actually potential for a third and fourth installment featuring actors Josh Brolin and Zoe Saldana, which would be awesome. Well, I couldn't get off this Zoom call with them without randomly talking about NBA basketball, especially since I saw Elijah on TV shaking hands with a guy from my hometown, LeBron James, at a recent Lakers game. I was so happy when, when he, you know, came back from Miami and won that championship in, in Cleveland. Sure. Like I remember watching that, that game seven and just being like, the, I, I had actually posted, I, I, I think I like at that time, whenever year that was 2017, no 20, I don't know, somewhere in there. Anyway, I remember posting on like Facebook and just being like, I think LeBron's the greatest ever. And ever, I just got so people like lost their minds. They're like, are you kidding? Michael Jordan, Kobe, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, that's just my opinion. I mean, I'm, I'm so, that guy to me is such an inspiration. I got to say, using VR to create your own corner of empathy in the emerging metaverse is pretty inspiring too. To connect with Elijah, make sure and visit his website at elijah-ab.com. Seven Minute Stories is created and performed by Aaron Califato. Audio production by Ken Went. You can connect with Ken or inquire about his audio production services at media216.com. Original artwork by Pete Whitehead. Find out more about Pete's work at petewhitehead.com. Special thanks to our partners at Evergreen Podcasts. And lastly, I'm Corey Burse. Make sure and tune in next week for another story.